Hi everyone, so today we're going to have a look at supply side policies. So in terms of what supply side policy is, it's a policy that aims to improve the long run productive potential of the economy and a successful supply side policy will shift the country's PPF or production possibility curve, so PPC, to the right. So there's a really good link here back to theme one. Right at the start of theme one, you had a look at PPFs and you saw that when an economy's when an economy grows, it will shift their PPF outwards. So now what you can see is in the second PPF, so the PPF that's on the right, they can produce more consumer goods and more capital goods at every single point due to the increase in the productive potential of the economy. So what I would now like you to do is using that information that you've got, if a supply side policy aims to improve the long run productive potential of an economy, use an aggregate supply and aggregate demand curve to draw the impact a supply side policy would have on the long run aggregate supply curve. Once you've done that, explain your diagram. So what do you think would happen to the long run aggregate supply curve? Pause this here and then you can draw that diagram. OK, so what you should have drawn is an outward shift of the longer and aggregate supply curve. So your longer and aggregate supply curve is then going to shift to the right. What that should then show you in terms of your axes is an increase in real GDP and downwards pressure on the price level. So we're going to then have deflationary pressure. So there are two different types of supply side policy and it's really important that you know the difference between both of them because very regularly you're asked about either specific market based or specific interventionist policies. So a market based supply side policy limits the intervention of the government and it allows the free market to correct any imbalances. There's three examples of, um, of those as well there for you. So what they could try to do is they could try to increase incentives. They can do that by um, decreasing income tax, lowering corporation tax, or they could try to promote co um, competition. They can do that by deregulation or privatisation. And finally, you could reform labour markets. And there's two ways that you could do that, either decrease national minimum wage or reduce trade union power. And an interventionist policy, and um, that will be where the government intervenes in the market. Um, and there's four different areas they can do that. So they can promote competition. They can promote competition by in, imposing or enforcing stricter competition policy. They can reform the labour market and they could do that by subsidising the relocation of workers. That's going to then encourage workers to move to different areas or they could make it easier to find jobs. They they could also improve the skills and qualities of the labour force, and they can do that by improving the quality or quantity of training, improving education or improving healthcare. And finally, they could improve infrastructure. And by infrastructure, we're talking about improvements in roads, schools or transport links as well. So that gives you a bit of an idea about the difference between market based and interventionist policies. So let's just have a little bit of a further look at some of the market based supply side policies. So one of the policies could be they could, that the government could decrease income tax. What that's going to do is create an incentive for employees to work, and that could then increase or expand the size of the labour force, as it would encourage economically inactive people to join the labour force. They could also cut corporation tax. That increases profit motives for firms, and it could encourage investment and new businesses to enter the market. Or another policy, they could um, lower national minimum wage, and that incentivizes firms to hire more workers. And then that has the same response um, as cutting income, to income tax, expansion in the labour force, and then it could then encourage economically inactive people to join the labour market. OK, so let's have a look at three different supply side policies. So the first one could be to reform trade unions. And what that would do is it could give rise um, to lower wages. So by reforming trade unions, we're basically saying take away some of the power that they have. If wages are lower, that could cause lower inflation and that could then make labour markets more flexible as well. Second policy could be to improve training and education. That's going to improve the productivity of workers and then that will make workers more flexible and more mobile so they can move between different jobs and potentially different sectors as well. Finally, they could improve the transport network and that could increase the ease and speed of transport. Keep thinking about that one because that's going to come up a little bit later when we look at HS2. 
Okay, so it's really important to understand how supply side policies could improve the performance of each of the following macroeconomic objectives. So we're going to have a bit of a chance now to link supply side policies to macroeconomic objectives. So what I would like you to do is explain how a supply side policy could improve the performance of each of the following. So how could a supply side policy um, give an economy more stable growth? How could it stabilize prices? How could it decrease employment? How could it create more balanced trade? How could it reduce inequality? And how could it balance the budget? And finally, how could it improve the environment? So if you pause that here, it should take you about six minutes to do that. So when you're thinking about government policy, it's really important to be able to rank which one is the most important. So it's really good to think about prioritising different factors. So if you were part of the current government, which of the areas below would you prioritise as being the most important? Do you think labour reform is the most important, educational reform or business incentives? So I'd like you to rank those from most to least important and then explain why you have done that. So if you pause that here, you can then do that. So now you should have your ranking. This is the final thing that you are then going to do um, on this task. So you're going to evaluate your area, whatever you've chosen is the most, chosen is the most important. So why might that, why is that the best idea? And now start thinking about the opposite, so the other side of that argument. So why might not that, why, why might that not be the best area to focus on? Think about balance, think about quality, efficiency, sustainability, and um, what are the assumptions that you've made? And um, what is going to happen in the long term and the short term? Is the impact going to be different? Think about the um, elasticity of the aggregate demand curve. Is that going to have an influence? Are there any other costs? And then think about opportunity costs within that as well. Does it counterbalance with any other government objectives? And then what's the success or the importance of your policy depend on. Okay, so now let's start thinking about HS2. So HS2 is the high speed railway project that is running from the north all the way down to the south. And the whole aim of HS2 was to try and improve labour flexibility, to encourage and to make the speed of transport between the north and south a lot quicker. So Thinking about a new high speed railway project, what benefits could occur in the short run? What are the costs in the short term? And in the long term, is the project worthwhile? So you pause that there, give you, you should have a bit of time to then have a research of that as well. Supply side policies all obviously have their limitations and there's four main limitations of supply side policies. The first one is that supply side policies have, have quite a long time lag. And so what I would like you to think about is, is the policy effective immediately? So for example, with education, the benefits and the of education take up to 18 years to be felt. So for example, if you um, increased the age at which people have to stay in education, it takes up to 18 years for the workforce and the economy to feel the increase in that productive potential. So the second limitation of supply side policies is you want to consider the impact um, of our policies on other nations. So other countries' policies impact our trade, and if their policy is more effective, it could impact on the impact on trade will not necessarily be the same. So they obviously then have to kind of play, and you have to think about the implications of other countries' policies. So cost is obviously a really big limitation of supply side policies. The government only has a certain amount of funding and they have to allocate it to different areas. HS2 is a great example of a project that is very expensive. It's really expensive to implement. So obviously the more expensive it is to to implement, then the government then has to take money away from a different budget. Is that worthwhile in the long term? So what's the initial cost is what you want to think about and what's the running cost of the policy? It could be an example of something that can actually generate revenue. So HS2, once it is up and running, will generate revenue um, and that will then potentially be really beneficial. So the running cost might potentially be lower. And finally, we've got a micro link here to government failure. So does the government have perfect information about this policy? Is it 100% going to be um, effective or is there something they don't know? Do they not know the true cost? Do they not know the true time it will take to implement this project? 
And finally, are the government allocating resources efficiently? It's a really good question. And that will then start you thinking synoptically about theme three as well, when you start to think about and look into efficiency. So the last thing I would like you to do, as this is the end now of government policy, we've had a look at monetary policy, fiscal policy and supply side policy. It's just distinguished between the three different types of policy. So what are they? Give some examples of each and then just make sure you can do that really clearly. Supply side policy. Thank you very much.